When I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, I had only two things on my mind. Paul Newman and a ride home. Hi guys, it's Britt, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Outsiders by F.C. Hinton. And I wanted to give a shout out, and I think I've given him a shout out almost every video that I've made, but Peter Likes Books is doing an F.C. E. Hinton read along, I guess you would call it. He calls it a class, and the class started with the outsiders, and he's not sure if he's going to continue with the works of S.E. Hinton, but I wanted to give it a shot. And this was one of my favorite books in middle school, so I was really, really, really excited to read this. And it was not like I remembered it. I remember it being a lot better written in middle school, but that's middle school and things change. And it's not even a bad book. Originally on Goodreads I'd given this five stars, purely based off my nostalgia. And then I knocked it down to three. Not because I didn't enjoy it, but because the writing style just didn't click with me anymore. We were in the mindset of our main character, Tony Boy Curtis, and his inner monologue narration I found really, really annoying, personally, and that, that made me think more critically about the book, I suppose, but it's about our main character, Pony Boy Curtis, and the gang violence that goes on in this world that Effie Hinton has created, and it's somewhere in the south, I'm not sure exactly where, but at one point they do travel to Windricksville. So I'm assuming it's somewhere near Kentucky, if not in Kentucky. But Pony Boy, we learn pretty early on, is basically an orphan. His parents have been killed in a car accident, and this leaves him in the care of his eldest brothers, Daryl and Soda Pop. And yes, that is his real name, as is Pony Boys. And he frequently reminds us of this. And the two gangs in this fictional world are called the Greasers, which is the gang that Pony Boy is a part of and the Soches, which are the upper class rich kids. And obviously there's tension between the gangs and right off the bat, Pony Boy's walking home from the movies and he almost gets jumped by the this these Soches, this group. But his brothers, uh, along with some of his friends of the family come and they rescue him. And that's when we get introduced to Dallas Winston, who is 17, and Pony Boy is 13, going on 14, I believe, in the novel. And Johnny is 16. Johnny is his best friend. And his brother Soda, I believe, is 17, 18, and Daryl, his brother, is 20. And Dallas Winston, aka Dally, not to be confused with Daryl, aka Gary, is 19, I believe, they said. 
and he's our anti-hero, I suppose. And Johnny, Pony, Boy, and Dowie are all kind of friends. Well, Dowie is kind of an acquaintance. He's just kind of there because Dowie really, really loves Johnny like a son. And things go down in this book. Really big things. So, if you guys don't want spoilers, click out now because I'm gonna spoil some pretty important things. But, if you don't want to read the book, go see the movie because it's still a really good movie. Alright, so, anyway, on with the spoilers. So, Pony Boy is the youngest, and him, Gary, and Johnny all decide to go to see a, a movie. And at this movie, they run into two girls named Marsha and Sherry, aka Cherry Valance. We don't learn Marsha's last name, but Cherry Valance is a name that's important to remember. And Dowie starts kind of messing around with these girls, flirting with them, because, you know, Dowie's the tough guy, he's got to take that opportunity. And Cherry doesn't take this very lightly. In fact, she, Dowie had bought her a coat and kind of said a wisecrack comment. I think the exact quote was, was here, maybe this will cool you off, and she threw the coke in his face, and Dari got a little upset. And so, to cool Dari down, Pony Boy and his friend Tubit offer to buy her a drink and some popcorn, and Pony Boy and her kind of have this little conversation and this is where we learned that Johnny months prior had gotten jumped by a soch with some rings and it left some scars on his face and we learned that Johnny is very very afraid of the soches because of this and who can blame him and it turns out that the Soch that had jumped Johnny happens to be Cherry's boyfriend, Bob. And Bob and Marsha's boyfriend, Randy, Randy, they, they catch them walking their girls home and they've been drinking and you're not in a clear place when you're drinking and a fight kind of breaks out but the girls are like no no we'll, we'll just go with them it's not worth a fight cherry says i hate fights and they just end up going home with their boyfriends and later on Pony Boy and Johnny decide that instead of going home right away, because it's still kind of early, they decide to go sleep in this lot. And they actually end up falling asleep in the lot. And Dari has been expecting Pony Boy home. He has a curfew, and Dari is his guardian now, so he expects these certain rules to be upheld, but Dari isn't, Dari isn't a father, he doesn't really know how to be a father, and that's kind of one of the main 
focal points of this book, even though Gary isn't in this book all that much. It's about these brothers and how they have to learn to cope with their living situation. And when Pony Boy gets home, it's two o'clock in the morning, they almost called the police, and Gary's not too happy. And just out of anger, Gary kind of slaps Pony Boy across the face, and he's Pony Boy has never been slapped, and Gary and his relationship has kind of been rocky to begin with. So when that happens, Pony Boy kind of goes into shock, and he runs out the door, and he goes and he finds Johnny still asleep in the slot, and they decide to go to the park and have a cigarette and stuff. I don't- there's a lot of smoking. I don't condone it. They thought back then it was cool, guys, but it's not cool. Don't smoke. It's, it's really unhealthy. They go to the park and it turns out that Bob and Randy have been looking for them because they're still angry about these greasers hanging out with their rich girlfriend. And they actually jump Johnny and Pony Boy. And Pony Boy has been sitting near this fountain and they're trying to drown him. So in an attempt to save his friend, Johnny actually kills Bob by accident in an act of self-defense because he's got this pocket knife that he carries around specifically for self-defense. And Pony Boy wakes up after all this happens and he sees his friend really panicked and there's Bob dead on the ground and so they go to Johnny's friend Dally Dallas for help because Dally's been in and out of jail a bunch of times throughout his life, so they think that Dally will know what to do. And so they go see Dally, and Dally says, Listen, you're gonna go to this church in Windrickville, and you're gonna hide out until I come. And... So they they jump on a train and they they ride it to Windricksville and they find this church. And within this church it's it's just an abandoned church. There's nothing really in it, so it's a perfect hideout and they hide out there for a week and the thing with greasers is they're really, really proud of their hair. And in an attempt to kind of disguise themselves, they decide to cut their hair, which is kind of long for a guy, it's probably around about here. If if you look up the Outsiders movie, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. But They bleach Pony Boy's hair, and he's really, really upset about this for a while because he's like, oh, I don't look tough anymore, I'm no longer a greaser, I've lost my identity, which is completely understandable, and given his age, that was probably a big deal to him to lose his entire identity. And during this hideaway, Johnny actually goes out and buys baloney and a copy of Gone with the Wind so Pony Boy can read it out loud to make the time pass a little more. And eventually a week goes by and Dally comes and he gets them. He's like, okay, 
everything's in the paper. They think you're going to Texas. And so Dally leaves with them because they're, they're starving. All they've eaten for a week basically is bologna sandwiches and they're hungry so Dally takes out takes them out to this fast food restaurant and they get burgers and sundaes and at that time you could get burgers for like 25 50 cents a piece which was a great bargain then and now and they come back they they go back to the church to kind of see I guess they had gone back for Gone with the Wind. It was never really explained why they went back to the church. I'm just assuming that they went back. And they see that it's on fire. And there's this group of people and they're like, oh my goodness, there are children inside the church. They're playing hide and seek. And Pony Boy and Johnny run in and they go and they get these kids but in the process uh johnny actually gets really 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 hurt one of the beams catches fire and it actually breaks his back and it's actually really sad because this just opens up a whole new state of grief for pony boy because johnny is not well off at all and he's really really sick he's really badly burned Dally was also burned but he only got his arm burned a little bit and it's not nearly as bad as Johnny Johnny can't feel anything below his upper back and he's terribly terribly burned and he's weak and he's just in pain. You have to feel for this poor 16-year-old boy who hasn't really lived life yet. And he even says to Pony Boy, you know, I'm really sick, but I don't want to die. And spoiler alert, if, if you don't want to know, the ending. Turn it off now. I know I gave a spoiler warning, but I'm gonna give you the full details. Full details here. So, if you want to continue on, this is your second warning. Alright, so if you're still here, Johnny cannot survive the injuries that he sustained and he ends up passing away in front of Pony Boy and Dallas after they had been home for a few days and they had been in what they call a rumble like a fight meaning Dally, Dally and the whole Greaser gang had been in this fight with the Soshas, minus Johnny, because obviously he couldn't be there. And afterwards, Johnny and, well, Pony Boy and Dally go and see Johnny, and Dallas tells them, you know, we beat them, we beat them, Johnny, we did it all for you and the last words that Johnny ever speaks is stay old pony boy stay gold referring to a poem that pony boy had read to him by Robert Frost it's stay gold and he has Pony Boy has no idea what that means quite yet, but he does learn. 
and Dallas is just grief-stricken. He, Johnny worked his entire life. He cared for that boy so much, and he felt like it was all for nothing, and sadly, Dally actually commit suicide by pulling an unloaded gun on the police and they shoot him dead and as if it's not bad enough that Johnny had died but Dally had also died that night and it's just a really really powerful story which is why I which I think it's why I really, really loved the story in middle school. And I really, really hope that you guys, if you don't want to read the book, at least see the movie at least once, because I feel like this is a film that everybody should see at least once. Because it's really inspirational, and despite the subject matter, it's kind of uplifting. And with that, guys, I'm gonna go. I'm losing my natural light. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!